Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christine and I like to read dark and disturbing things. Today I'm doing the book tag that everybody is doing this time of year and that is the mid-year freak out book tag. the book tag that everybody is doing, everyone knows about, but no one seems to know who created it. And I've seen several different slight variations of it, but one that I recently watched that I really enjoyed was Rebecca over at Midnight Tomes. So I'm going to be using the questions that she has in her channel and I will link her channel down below. So if you're unaware, this is just a tag to check in because it is the middle of the year and to see how some how we feel about some of the things that we've read, how our goals are going. And also it's just fun to kind of check in and see what we're doing. Um, I did do the quarter year freak out tag only like a month ago. I was really late in doing that. So I tried to kind of put this one off a little bit because I'm scared that some of my answers will be the same. So instead of picking the same exact answers for some of them, I might switch it up. Um, plus it's hard to pick always. It's like when you're picking your favorite book or something, I'll try to throw something different in there. The first question is, how is your reading goal going? Um, I don't care about my number of books per year. I feel like I, the first time I hit 100 books a year, I was like, okay, whoa, I could do that. And it just kind of goes up a little bit each year. And I try not to put too much stock into that because some things could be like reading a lot of novellas or middle grade books or um, listening to a lot of books that can go quite faster. Um, so to me, it doesn't, the number doesn't really matter if you care. I looked up on Goodreads, I'm at 72 books so far this year, and that sounds about right to me. But um, one of the goals that I had for this year was reading some of the books that I already owned when we started the year out. And while I did not really excel at the not purchasing books in the Read What You Own Challenge, I have been keeping track in my journal every time I read a book that I previously owned. I've been coloring it in and trying to fit in within these categories and I just counted up and I'm at exactly 50 books. So 50 out of 72 books that I previously owned, I think is pretty darn good. Um, so the other ones must all be books that I've either read on KU, books that I got from the library, or books that I've listened to. So the majority of my books being books that I've already owned, I think is amazing. If I do say so myself. I, I anticipated it taking the entire year. So to be exactly at 50, I mean, I do wish I was a little bit further along, but that's okay. I'm glad that I'm reading books that I owned before and not just constantly picking up new books and then only reading those and never getting to the ones that I bought before. I still have quite a ways to go though. Question number two is what is the best, what is the best book that I have read in 2024? Um, so I previously answered this by saying the reformatory and if I'm being honest that is probably still true but if I was to pick a runner up I'm going to pick um, I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. There's actually been quite a few books that I've read this month that I really enjoyed. But if you want to hear some of my top choices, um, in January it was The Reformatory. In February it was Strange the Dreamer with Eyes Are the Best Part kind of tied with that. March was The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi. April was Head Like a Hole. May was I Was a Teenage Slasher. And tomorrow's the last day of June. What am I going to pick for June? Let me look. I think it's going to be Chlorine by Jade Song with a brother from Anya Alborn close behind. I liked both of those books a lot. Question number three is what is the best sequel you've read so far in 2024? I actually have only read one sequel so far and that was Amy McCaw's Mina and the Slayers. I read that in For Old School April which is like a Buffy inspired um, YA book about vampires and vampire hunters and it is just a fun series so check that one out. Question number four are what are some new releases that you want to read soon? All of them. All of them always. That is my problem. <laughs> um, so some books that I've purchased that I have not read yet, uh, Education of Malice by S.T. Gibson. I have not read the third book in the Indian Lake Trilogy by Stephen Graham Jones, which is my favorite series, but I'm rereading the first two. 
I'm sure there's many more that I'm leaving out, but I'm honestly just having fun with reading the books that I own and not worrying too much about what I need to read, what's coming out, all of that. I'm, yeah. So question five, I feel like is very similar. It is what are some of your most anticipated reads for 2024? And if I'm completely honest with you, I usually don't look too far ahead at what's coming out, but I do kind of absorb some of that from watching other channels and um, just hearing about certain things that are coming out. One is a book I've already read, but it isn't technically out yet. And that was, I was a teenage slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, I'm still excited to get that, my copy of that and have it on my shelf. Um, that's kind of a cop out answer, I guess. Um, I am excited for the third installment of Amari, which is a middle grade series that I really like. Um, the third book, we've been waiting a while for that to come out. That is supposed to come out, I think in August. And, um, by Brian McCauley, Candy Cane Kills Again is going to be coming out in time for the holiday season. And I really enjoyed that like holiday slasher last year. So I am looking forward to that as well. The next question is what was the biggest surprise of the year so far? Um, I think that in my quarter year uh, check-in, my quarter <laughs> freak out, um, I said that it was David Sodergren's The Har because I didn't think I would be into that. And then I absolutely loved it. Um, and that still holds true, but I had another one that came up that I really enjoyed and that was Final Women. Anything I talk about, um, sorry for not naming <laughs> authors, but I will just be popping pictures up there. It's just a lot easier. Um, I got this from the author as to read and review and I didn't really, I don't know. I didn't think that I wasn't expecting anything. I didn't go in with any expectations, which I usually like to do, but it's hard to do that 100% without picking up, um, you know, from hearing other people talk about books. But this is one I had not heard anyone talk about and I went in completely blind and I really had a great time and I really enjoyed this book. And I would absolutely buy the next book that comes out by this author because I had such a good time. Uh, the next question is, what was the biggest disappointment so far this year? Um, so this isn't the worst book I've read this year. This is something that I really thought I was going to like and then didn't like. And that was someone you can build a nest in. Um, I, I picked this up without any hype, without hearing about it, knowing about it, just finding it at the bookstore, not even realizing it was a new release and thinking the premise sounded so interesting. And I did really like the character of this. If you haven't heard me talk about it, it is about like this amorphous blob that develops feelings and um, kind of, you know, finds out what it's like to be, to have humanity. And I just thought that it was going to be a four or five star read for me. And it started off really strong and it just did not work for me. So I was the most disappointed by that one. I think in my quarter year check-in, I said Brahms Child Thief, and that is still very true. Um, I anticipated really liking that one as well. And um, yeah, it just didn't work out. The next question is, what is my favorite new to me author? That has got to be David Sodergren. Um, I I've obviously heard of him before, but I had never read anything by him. And I have only read two, but I was blown away by both The Har and Maggie's Grave. I've already purchased several other books that I cannot wait to read. Um, I will definitely be devouring his entire backlist. And I just really love his style. It's like B-movie horror with humor. And it's just my favorite type of horror that doesn't take itself too, too seriously, isn't afraid to get gross and um, definitely has had written some scenes. I've read some scenes that are going to live with me for a very long time, if not forever, um, especially from Maggie's Grave. So yeah, 100% uh, recommend. The next question is your new, what is your new fictional crush? I don't often have fictional crushes. <laughs> I think I'm maybe too old for that. Um, every once in a while I get a character that I don't think it's a crush, but it's like someone I wish I was that person or I really look up to that character. But I don't think anything is standing out as a crush. So I really don't have an answer for this one. Yeah, I don't. The next question is, what is your favorite character in 2024? Um, I really had to think about this and 
uh, I kind of have a silly answer, I guess, but there have been several books I've read that have had older characters, or when I say older, I mean closer to my age, which I really 100% love. Like, I appreciate that. Um, so I really liked Amina and Amina al Sarafi. I liked the main character in the Har. Well, okay, I wasn't as close to her age. But you see what I'm saying, like characters who actually have some life experience and I just find it really refreshing and just a little more honest view of the world. But a character that I really enjoyed reading from their viewpoint was in the book Remarkably Bright Creatures, the octopus named Marcellus. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, Marcellus is a Pacific octopus living in an aquarium and while I didn't love this book it was not his fault he saved that book like I would read an entire book from his viewpoint he is just this grumpy octopus that is uh he's very intelligent he has learned to escape his enclosure and so he could go find some good food uh they're not feeding him enough so he goes and has a little snack here and there so I 100% identify with that. And he's just like, just observes humans throughout the day. Like they're all observing him, but he's observing them and he's very bright. He's a remarkably bright creature, some might say. And uh, yeah, he's just grumpy. I loved him. The next question is, what is a book in 2024 that made you cry? I am very hard. I'm very difficult to make cry in a book, I think. Watching a movie or a TV show, you can get me very easily. I don't know what the difference is. Um, even characters that I don't care about, like the situation can make me like tear up. The only book I really remember tearing up for was The Reformatory by Tana Nareev Du um, and just a lot of the hardships that uh, the characters go through because it is very reflective of things that real people have gone through and still do. So to me, that one got me. I did actually just read a book called Children of Chicago by Cynthia Paleo and I did find myself like a little beginning of prickles in the eyes which is kind of weird because this uh I was not super emotionally invested in this book but there is a lot of talk about children children in Chicago um and just how difficult life is and how they have had to learn to deal with death as just like this common thing that happens there. And um, there's just a conversation that's going on with a high school student who has lost a good friend. This is not spoilers. Um, and just he, reading what he has prepared to, to ugh, reading what he has prepared to say at a funeral. And yeah, that kind of got me a little bit too, because kids should not have to deal with this stuff but it unfortunately is very commonplace in cities like that the next question is what is a book that made you happy um this one is very surprising that I even liked it and I recently read it it is Butcher and Blackbird and this is a romance between two serial killers and there were parts in here that just had me laughing it does not take itself seriously, which I think is the only reason that this romance, this dark romance worked for me. I just, there were nods to movies like Sil Silence of the Lambs and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And there's just scenes within there that, that definitely had me giggle a few times out loud. And I just had a really fun time with this. I found it hard to put down. So I'm going to say Butcher and Blackbird. The next question is, what is one of the most beautiful books you've gotten this year? And the only one that really is super coming to mind because I haven't been getting um, the book boxes where I usually get all of my, you know, pretty editions that I have. But I did just buy this off of somebody that was selling their copy because this was a fairy loot book. And I did just show this. This is the Honey Witch because look at these sprayed edges. And it was going for some cottage core vibes. Sorry if you just saw this in my book haul, but I think it's worth showing again. So this is the hard cover and all the end papers with foiling. And it had a reversible dust jacket, which I thought was beautiful. So even if I end up not liking this book, it is very beautiful. The next question is, what is an intimidating book that you have been avoiding? 
Um, probably the one that I've been avoiding the longest is House of Leaves by um, Mark Z. Danielewski. And I did actually try to start this book once and I was just only got like 50 pages and I was really bored. And I found this book so long ago, way before I discovered booktube. I literally googled what is the scariest book <laughs> out there and this book came up and people were like, yes, within the first chapter I like shit my pants and I'm like, okay. And so I'm reading and I'm just bored, bored, bored. Um, I'm going to try to give it one more shot, I think in November. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm told just to take my time with it, but yeah, I don't think I'm going to force the issue if I'm not feeling it. I've heard it's a book that I think you either absolutely love or you loathe and there's no in between. So I'm going to say House of Leaves. I don't think there's any other books that I'm truly avoiding because I'm intimidated other than that one. I do have many um, fantasy books that I would like to get to. I have started making a dent in them. So I did find that a lot of times the, the fantasy books that I was intimidated by end up not being intimidating at all, even though they're super chonky or they look like they're going to be really serious world building. They haven't. It's all, it's all up here. The next question is what books do you want to reread the, this year? And I do not usually reread books. Like it is pretty rare only because I have so many books that I want to get to that I feel like I'm wasting time by rereading something, which is silly, but I am currently rereading My Heart is a Chainsaw. I'm rereading the first two books in the Indian Lake trilogy so I can finish off the series. Um, what happened was last year when I read the second book in the series, I had wished I had reread the first one before that because there were just details that I had forgotten. Um, a lot of times I just remember how much I like a certain vibe of a book. That doesn't mean I remember all of the details. So I am currently rereading My Heart is a Chainsaw and I am loving it just as much as the first time, if not more. And I think that I'm actually getting a little bit more out of it because I already have a feel for Jade's voice, which is helpful going into this and understanding what's going on where things might have gone over my head before. And since I forget things, I'm like the person that you can tell the same joke to because I will forget the punchline. I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember hearing this, but I don't remember the punchline. <laughs> so it is kind of like rereading it for the first time a little bit just because my memory stinks. Uh, the last question is, what are the books that are the top of my TBR for the rest of the year? Um, I did not give this any thought. So let me think. <laughs> Here's the thing. I have been moving away from TBRs a little bit. I love making them. I love filming them. I love thinking about them. But do I follow them? No. And I don't get mad at myself because I like to mood read. So lately what I've been doing is reading, I was picking a max of four solid books a month that are on my TBR that I'm like, okay, these four you wanna get to for whatever reason, maybe it's a buddy read or a book club or whatever. And then just mood reading the rest and it's lovely. Uh, it is very hard to kind of get out of the mindset of what I should be reading. Maybe I should be reading something for a, a vlog idea or something like that. But when I do that, it makes it feel like homework. It makes it feel like an obligation. And that just takes the, sucks the joy out of reading. So um, I don't have a set TBR that I want to read for the last of the year. I want to get to the last of the Indian Lake trilogy. I want to read, right now I'm focused on summer and just all the water books that I want to finish reading. So I have um, Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. I have, I always confuse this one with the Darcy Coates. I have um, the Amakatsu book. I'll put it up here. I always want to say From Below, but that's Darcy Coates. Oh, I do want to read the second book in the John Gwynn series. It is The Hunger of the Gods. I read the first one last year and I know the third one's coming out. So I do want to get to that. Early in the year, I did pick up two fantasy books that I really want to give a shot. And one is a Robin Hobb book. I have heard nothing but great things about Robin Hobb. And the one that I got was The Ship of Magic. This is book one in the Live Ship Traders 
and I also picked up a Joe Abercrombie book. These were recommendations from you guys when I said I wanted to get more into fantasy, especially adult fantasy and darker fantasy. So I would really like to get to these as well. Of course, I have a slew of other, um, <laughs> I, I have a ton of books I wanna get to. So let's not even get into that, I'll get overwhelmed. All right, so that wraps up the mid-year freakout tag. I'm not sure why it's called a freakout tag. Like I'm not really freaking out. I guess maybe if you're behind on your goals, you'd be freaking out. But reading is supposed to be fun, so who cares? What your goals were at the beginning of the year, you may have found something else you really love instead. So just go with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really have a good time kind of checking in and asking myself what some of my favorites are and thinking about some of these questions. If you would like to answer these questions and you don't have a booktube channel, um, I've had you guys tag me in Instagram when you answer these or you can also answer them down below. I like to hear your answers too. I feel, like to feel like this is a two-way conversation and so that's why I always encourage comments and if you want to answer some of your questions, it doesn't have to be all of them. I'd love to hear your answers below. Thank you guys again for watching and I will do one of these at the end of the year. Stay spooky!